Here on Radio 4 for the next hour, it's our Friday drama. Claire Foy, Blake Ritson and Charlie Cox star in Simon Passmore's thriller, Leverage. Uh, yeah. <sighs> the state of this place. Uh, terrific view. If you like looking at a dirty great sewer. Oh, the river's nice. I like the river. I can't look at it without thinking of all the bodies in it. Those currents trying to suck you down. Yeah. Has it as a profession, eh? Speaking of which, shall we? <sighs> right, um... White male, age about... Well, what do you say? Mid twenties, give or take. Mid twenties, fully dressed, lying on a bed. They'll be able to see that on the video. Concentrate on the details. Okay. So, uh, do the vomit next. Right. Vomit on the pillow and sheets. Traces of white powder around the nostrils and uh, uh, check your gums. Yes, gums too. Right. Traces of white powder also on the upper gums. Don't forget the baggy. Oh, yeah, right. Um. Small plastic bag containing traces of white powder on a bedside table. A uh, CD case. Huh, looks like the Verve. It's Urban M's. You think that's significant? Oh, probably a copy in every flat in this building. Classic album. So no, it's not significant. Focus on what is. Uh, along with a roll fifty pound note. Yeah, classic. And a razor blade. Traditional touch, <laughs> old school. Okay, give us a camera. Well, you did the video last time. Who's the senior officer here? How am I supposed to learn if you never let me do anything? At least try and get it in focus this time. Use the um, water thingy and show a bit of the flat for, you know, context. The huge windows, that view of the river you like so much. Those pictures on the walls. The incredibly bloody expensive high five. It probably cost more than my car. I expect this bloke's espresso machine probably cost more than your car. What do you think he did? Well, you don't need to be a D.I. to work that one out. He's rich, he lives in a flat the size of a football pitch, he works in Canary Wharf, and likes sticking drugs up his nose. Or he used to. What do you think he did? Leverage By Simon Passmore We're going to be late. There's plenty of time. Does this look all right? Not too informal? No. I don't have anything black. At least nothing except that dress I wore at the party at the weekend. That hardly seems appropriate. What you've got on's fine. What did they say at school about taking the day off? Oh, I've got cover for the morning. I should be back by the end of lunch break. They made me take a day's holiday. Hardly seems fair. Just what I said. It's not as though I'm going to enjoy myself standing in that god-awful place to watch them put him in a hole in the ground. <laughs> Helen? It's all right. I'm all right, it's just... Saying it makes it real somehow. I still can't believe it. Not properly. I don't think any of us can. He was so young. He was our age. Too young to die, anyway. Sit me up, would you? Have I got a black tie? I don't know. Never needed one before. You look nice in that dress. Thanks. I bet you look nice out of it too. What are you doing? Thought so. Stop it! Zip me up again, there isn't time. You'd be surprised how quick I can be. No, I wouldn't. Stop it, David. I mean it. I'm not in the mood. I was just trying to cheer you up. I don't want to be cheered up. Life goes on. For us, not for Jamie. No. It's different for you. Oh, why? Well, you two were never that close, were you? I didn't think you really liked him all that much. We didn't have a huge amount in common. I know Jamie never had your social conscience. Here we go, St David. Uh, but he wasn't totally heartless. What, he worked in the city to help relieve the burden of third world debt? To get the global economy back on its feet. No, he didn't. He liked nice things. I'm sure he liked earning lots of money and spending it. I'm just saying he wasn't heartless. A heartless capitalist exploiter. Not if you say not. I don't know why we're even having this argument. It isn't an argument. It's been years, after all, since we were all together. Why bring all that stuff up now? It's what happens when someone dies. I wish we didn't have to go. <sighs> so do I. I just want to put my head under the duvet and keep it there. Yeah. Pretend it was all a mistake. 
Yeah. Well, it doesn't work. Sometimes it does. For a while. In the end, though, you have to come out, don't you? In the end, yes. Are you ready now? Ready. Come on, then. I know Jamie would have wanted music playing when he was... when we're where we are now. He loved music. Only he never said what... Well, I, I don't suppose he'd given a moment's thought to any of this. Why would he? He was only 25. <clears throat> His life lay in front of him. So I decided to just take his iPod and put it into this thing and go back one song and play it, whatever it was. That way we can all hear the last thing Jamie listened to before he died. Are you all right? I'm not sure I can take much more of this. <laughs> Me neither. down as an old country fan. Maybe it was a secret passion. I'd have thought the Kaiser Chiefs were more his line. you'd call a dutiful son. He could be careless of the people around him, people who loved him. I suppose he felt there'd be plenty of time for that later. He could be selfish, what young man isn't? But he was kind when he remembered to be. He was good company. His presence lit up a room and he always made me laugh. I'm going to miss him more than I can say. What a grim bloody morning. I think we all need a drink. We've met, haven't we? Mark Harris, I thought you recognised me. I saw you looking at me in the church. <laughs> I was admiring your tie. I remember you. Saw you in lectures. Shall I get them in? Helen, let me guess. A large, dry white wine. Nothing for me, thanks. Go on. Stiffen the sinews. <sighs> An orange juice, then. Really? That's all? David, you won't let me down, I hope. I'm teaching this afternoon. Just a small one. The deputy head will smell it on my breath. <laughs> then what? Detention? <laughs> the sack, more like. God, it's worse for you than it is for the kids. I bet they're all down the pub at lunchtime with their fake IDs. <laughs> As if they're not buying drugs. Not in year seven. Uh, have you got Glenfiddich? A large one, uh, and two orange juices, and some dry roasted peanuts. Uh, thanks, uh, I don't want anything. Nonsense, you'll make me look like I need this as much as I do if I have to drink it on my own. That vicar was a miserable old git, wasn't he? All that stuff about how no man can serve God and mammon. Might as well have just come out with it and said that Jamie was a rich playboy banker and a selfish sod and had it coming to him. His poor mother. She looked devastated. I should have talked to her. They said I just ran away. I couldn't think what to say. <clears throat> I don't think they were close. She uh, hadn't seen Jamie in years from what I gather. Thanks. Well, in a way, that just makes it worse, doesn't it? And there you are. Cheers. To Jamie. To Jamie, of course. Jamie. How about you? I haven't seen her in ages. No, when did you last set eyes on Jamie? Not since university. I've seen him more recently than that. Have you? When? I don't remember exactly. A year or so, maybe? Why? Uh, just curious. Does it matter? No, no. Well, I uh, better make tracks. Got a meeting in town in an hour. Can I give either of you a lift? We're fine, thanks. Helen? I can take the bus from here. 
right then. I'll say cheerio. <laughs> cheerio? <laughs> he's our age, but he sounds more like my boss. <sighs> Mark's always been like that. Didn't he belong to some weird societies back at uni? The gun club. Did he? I don't remember. Not a bit like you. He homed in on us like a heat-seeking missile. Familiar faces, I suppose. Not many of them there, were there? No one from university except Mark. Were he and Jamie friends? I don't recall ever seeing them together. Well, Jamie liked to keep his friends in different boxes. I wonder what box Mark belongs in. <laughs> Probably the same one that was earning Jamie mega bucks in the city. I suppose so. Oh, well, I'd better get into the office. I thought they made you take the day off. They did, but I still have to get my copy in by five. You need a new job. I need more than that. Hi, Kendra. Oh, there you are. Clive's been asking for you. Oh, you mean he's been asking for my copy? Just give me an hour. Oh, he's got me selling space today. I'm like ants, I am. I'm everywhere. But your editorial, same as me. I'll try telling Clive that. How was your funeral? Oh, bloody miserable. Well, they always are. But something else, though. It felt wrong somehow. And you said it was your age. Of course it felt wrong. Oh, I don't mean that. There was hardly anyone there, for one thing. Like he'd let go of his old friends, but hadn't made any new ones. Oh, look, I am sorry for your loss, but this copy is due in 51 minutes, so let's sort that out first and leave the rest till later. Editorial. Right. Uh-huh. Right, yeah, I'll tell her. There's someone to see you downstairs in reception. Mark? How did you know I worked here? <laughs> Is it a secret? No, I just... I just wanted to have a word privately about Jamie. Why privately? Let's talk over there where it's quiet. The thing is, there's no point in upsetting David unnecessarily, is there? Uh, what do you mean? Jamie and I had some unfinished business. He and I were partners, you see. Partners? I thought you hadn't seen Jamie since university. That was what David said. Uh, oh, well, what were you partners in? Really, it, it doesn't matter. The point is, Jamie had some important information for me, and despite the tragedy of his death... You want it? I wouldn't even bring it up if it wasn't so desperately important. Why are you bringing it up? I thought you might be able to help. Me? If Jamie had something for you, why wouldn't he just give it to you? For one thing, he may have suspected he was being watched. Why would anyone be watching him? There are people who don't want our project to succeed. I I'm sorry, I don't... Did you work with Jamie at the bank? Not exactly. I don't understand what this has to do with me. I thought Jamie might have given you something. For safekeeping. I already told you I haven't seen Jamie for more than a year. You did, yes. I happen to know that isn't true. What? I didn't want to say so in front of David, obviously. I see. I'm sorry. But there it is. So, did Jamie give you anything? Such as? Oh, I don't know. Uh, computer files. Perhaps a USB drive. No, nothing like that. Oh. Pity. Well, I apologise for the intrusion. If anything does turn up in the post, say, please give it to me immediately, will you? Here. My card. You can count on me for my discretion. What's that you're playing? Nothing. What's wrong with that CD? Hey. Hey, you're crying. Not really. It's just... seeing someone we haven't seen since we're all students. Mark, you mean? And Jamie being dead. How well do you think they knew each other? Mark and Jamie? Why? No reason. In some ways, it doesn't seem any time at all since we all graduated. And in others... I know. It's a lifetime. 
At least you're doing what you wanted. Teaching. You said you wanted to teach. You wanted to be useful. <laughs> I hadn't the faintest idea what it was going to be like. I was so naive. If I'd known then. You're principled. <sighs> you're a man of principle. I like that. That's why I love you. Is it? You're a much better person than I am. Don't say that. Kendra? Hmm? If there was something you didn't want your husband to know about... You mean someone? Would you tell him? Oh, are you mad? Of course not. What if he finds out? Then you deal with it, but it's better for everyone if he doesn't. The less he knows, happier he'll be. I suppose so. Oh, no. You want to tell him, don't you? I don't like lying to him. Is this still going on? Uh, no, it's over. You don't want to leave your husband? No. Then don't rock the boat. All you can do is make things worse. Just get on with your life. I'm glad you called. There was no one else I could talk to. No one who knew Jamie. What about David? <laughs> it's difficult. Ah, so you haven't told him. I think that's a wise decision. Do you think Jamie was in some kind of trouble? Because of... the business you had with him? What kind of business was it? Why'd you ask that? It's just that nothing about his death makes much sense to me. A heart attack at his age? I heard drugs were involved. Did you? Where? I have friends in the police. Jamie wasn't an angel, but he wasn't the type to overindulge either. He was quite moderate in his way. A drug overdose, it just seems out of character. Mm. Then, what do you think? I wondered if it was anything to do with his job. Did he ever mention that to you? Jamie never talked about work. He said it was boring. And I never really thought about it until now. But this afternoon I did a search. His bank's been under investigation for fraud. <laughs> So, you've been doing some detective work? Just Googling, really. Be careful. I wouldn't want to see you get hurt. Why should I get hurt? The people Jamie worked for, you wouldn't want to find yourself on the wrong side of them. <laughs> I should come clean. What Jamie was doing was of interest to a certain official organisation. What? I work for that organisation. You're saying, what? That you're a spook? A spy? Let's skip the next bit, spelling out the letters and the numbers. The point is that we asked Jamie to do something for us. He was cooperating. Hang on. You had Jamie leaking information? The pressure may have turned out to be too much for him. In which case, I'm to blame. I thought he could handle the situation. I may have misjudged him. You're saying Jamie killed himself? It's a possibility. Uh, and you think before he died, he may have sent me this, this USB drive to pass on to you? Perhaps. And that's why I'm concerned. For you, mainly. Me? Why? Well, if what you say is correct, it's already cost one person his life, hasn't it? If it does turn up, you need to pass it on as quickly as possible. Helen. Yes? It really would be safer for everyone if you left the investigation to us. To me. I saw Mark today. Mark? What did he want? He seems to think Jamie might have given me something to look after. Why would he do that? What if Jamie was caught up in something bad? <sighs> like what? I don't know. Something to do with his job, the bank. That doesn't explain why he's dead. He was leaking information about the bank to the security service. Mark told you that? He thinks it was suicide. Jamie found the pressure too much. Does that sound like Jamie to you? Uh, I didn't know him that well. I suppose neither of us did. It just doesn't seem right somehow. MI5 having its own website. I know. And MI6 recruiting for spies. How secret is that? Well, it doesn't go so far as saying who works there. What are you doing, Helen? Someone I know has been dropping heavy hints that he works with the security service. 
And they're taking an interest in your friend's death? Apparently. But why? I thought you said he had a heart attack or something. That's what I thought. Now it seems he may have committed suicide. Suicide? Something to do with the bank he worked for. Oh, I get it. This is your big chance to be an investigative journalist. I just want to find out what really happened. No, you go for it, girl. Otherwise, you could be writing avatorials for garden centres when you're 40. And then how good will you feel? Please sit down, Helen. Would you like some tea? I'm fine, thank you. That's all, Eva. It's been a long time since we've seen one another. What can I do for you? I just want to say how very sorry I am for all this. What are you referring to? My son's death, of course. What else? Your relationship with him? I don't regret knowing Jamie. I mean later. After you all left university. We stayed friends. I'm not a fool, Helen. I was still very fond of him. Evidently. And yet you married another man. Yes. Which didn't prevent you from continuing to see Jamie. Did he tell you that? He didn't have to. It may not have seemed it from the outside, but we were close in our own way. You blame me for what happened. I always thought Jamie might marry you. Did you? I hoped he would. You could have saved him from himself. I'm not sure anyone can save another person. Not even someone she loves. As you said, I married another man. I didn't love Jamie any less. I just loved David more. Yes. I understand. Jamie always needed someone to keep him on the straight and narrow. The right woman. Ah, well. I'm trying to find out what happened. And what good will that do? It won't bring him back. I want to know the truth. Do you? Well, you're young. Of course you do. Jamie's dead. Tell me something. Were there drugs? Yes. I see. But I don't think Jamie's death was an accident. I'm sorry. No, oh, please. Go on. If that's true, then I want to know who's responsible and why. I understand you're now a journalist. Sort of. And is this about Jamie or you? Both. I see. And how do you think I can help? There was a post-mortem. So I'm led to believe. Yes. I'm not allowed to see the report, but as a relative... I am. Yes. I see. I was warned about this. Were you? One of Jamie's friends from the city. He told me a journalist might come round asking questions. I didn't expect that it would be you, Helen. Who was this friend? Oh, the, rather a, a middle-aged young man. I... I didn't altogether care for his manner. Give me your telephone number. David? It's me, oh. Mark. <laughs> Where's David? Uh, gone to buy a bottle of whiskey. What are you doing here? I stopped by for a drink. Can I get you one? Uh, no, thanks. And to see you. Why? Our investigation into the bank is at a delicate stage. I don't want anything to muddy the water. Or anyone. You've been asking questions, drawing attention. <laughs> What's the problem? Are you worried about what I might find out? Not at all. I was just thinking more about what David might find out about you and Jamie. Is that a threat? Of course not. I've already explained. I just don't want to see you get hurt. 
Here we are. Oh, uh, you leaving? Uh, got to, I'm afraid. Things to do. Lovely seeing you both. He sends me out for a drink, then leaves the second I get back. I think it was me he wanted to see. Why? He wants me to stop asking questions. Maybe he has a point. What if Mark was responsible for Jamie's death? Responsible? How? Putting pressure on Jamie to tell the bank secrets. Blackmailing him, even. He went too far and now he wants to cover his tracks. And that's why he came here tonight? He wants me to back off. Perhaps he's right. What? I mean, why are you getting involved? David, listen. I've got a confession to make about Jamie. A confession? It wasn't a year ago I last saw him. More like a fortnight. Why did you say you... We were seeing each other. Oh, oh God. Every once in a while. I, I, I don't want to hear this. No, I don't want to say it, but I still have to. So you and Jamie... You know we broke up. And then, a year after we got married out of the blue, he called me. You had a parents' evening. I told you I was meeting a girlfriend. I can't believe this. We went on seeing each other. You were still sleeping with him? It doesn't mean I love you any less. It doesn't change anything between That's us. That's what you think. You... You're angry. Now I understand why you were so upset. I've said I'm sorry. No. Actually, you haven't. Well, I am sorry. And that makes it all right, does it? No, but... At least it means we can be honest with each other. Or that now I can never trust you again. Did you know that Jamie did coke? It wasn't a complete surprise. You did it with him, didn't you? He wasn't a heavy user. No? I never wanted to hurt you. Then why did you? What I had with Jamie was different. I can't explain. You don't have to. It's pretty obvious. I am the dull husband. He was the exciting lover. It wasn't like that. Isn't like that. There was... Something... I don't know. He loved life. I wonder how well you really knew, Jamie. I know you're angry. You were right to be. But I owe it to him to find out what happened. Here you are. Thank you. This says he died of a lethal injection of cocaine. Jamie never injected. He was always terrified of needles. You see what this means? Of course. Things may come out which you'd rather had stayed secret. You must do what you think is right. This is David Green. Please leave a message. David, it's me. I've just seen the autopsy report. I think Jamie may have been murdered and that Mark's involved somehow. Call me when you get this. Hello, uh, can you give me the number for MI5, please? That's right, the security service. Quiet tonight. You can never tell with a foot tunnel. One moment is full, next is empty. Do you feel safe in here on your own? Me? Who's going to want to bother me? I haven't got anything. I'm just pushing buttons. I hate walking through it on my own. I can't stop thinking that the river's just a few feet above my head. It's reassuring, though, to know that you're here. Like I said, I'll just push the buttons. Thank you. Hello? Mark? Is that you? I'm not afraid of you! Pass! 
bastard. Don't you think you're getting this all out of proportion? How? I think Jamie was murdered. Oh, it's all about Jamie, isn't it? Oh, this is no time to act jealous. You think I'm acting? I spoke to someone at MI5. They couldn't confirm that Mark worked for them. <laughs> what did you expect? A, a staff list with addresses and phone numbers? Uh, David, please listen. I may be wrong. I accept that. And I understand you're angry about Jamie. But if I'm right, then Mark's dangerous. We should go to the police. I think you're letting your imagination run away with you. Am I? Oh, hang on. She just walked in. I'll transfer you. Who is it? Says he's a friend of yours. Hello? It's Mark. Was that you in the foot tunnel? I thought we'd agreed you'd leave this matter to me. I didn't agree. That involving third parties would be a mistake. How do you know who I talk to? I'm watching you. I'm not frightened of you. You should be. Mohammed, if I have to tell Hello, you one more time... How, how did you get in? There's supposed to be security. Why are you forgetting something? I work in security. Why are you here? I wanted a word about Helen. I'm not entirely convinced she fully appreciates the situation. I... Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Cut the crap, David. We don't want the police involved in this. How do you know about that? Do I have to keep reminding you? I work in security. It's my job to know. Helen's got a mind of her own. Oh, dear. What makes you think she'll listen to me? How you do it is your problem, but do it, if you care about her. You better leave before I... Do what? Dial 999? If I were you, David, I'd attract as little attention to myself as possible. You've already allowed a strange man into the playground. You don't want to start raising questions in your colleagues' minds, do you? We'll chat later. Online. Hi, Kendra. Sorry I'm late. Knives looking for you. What have I done now? Maybe it's more a question of what you haven't done. You left something on your desk. Oh, that's just great. What does it say? A formal warning. There have been phone calls for you while you were out. He took one of them. Do you know who it was? That man with the plummy voice. Oh, I don't know what he said, but... Are you sure that whatever it is you're doing is worth all this hassle? No. I don't know. I'm not sure of anything anymore. What have you got yourself into? Hello? Oh, it's you. Downstairs? OK, I'll come down. David's here. Shouldn't he be at work? Shouldn't you be come to that? Kendra, I'm sorry. Leave your coat. I'll tell Chloe you're in the toilet. Why aren't you at school? I'm not allowed into the place. Why not? I've been suspended. Oh, David, what for? Apparently, there's been a complaint, anonymous, and accusations. Accusations of what? Someone told the school I've got child porn on my computer. God. They're talking about a police investigation. What about the head? The deputy head? She just looked at me. They can't just uh, turn on you like this. You're a good teacher. Why should they take the risk? Uh, but they won't find anything. They'll have to let you back. I'm a teacher. Just the suggestion's enough. Looks like we'll be unemployed together then. Why? What's happened to you? Someone's been talking to my boss too. <sighs> We've got to stop this. How? All this is because of Jamie. I know. I'm sorry. Just stop asking questions about him. Give Mark what he wants before things get any worse. How could things get any worse? Surely he's not allowed to behave like this, whoever he works for. Anyway, I don't have what he wants. Don't you care about me at all? Of course I do. Then put an end to it now. Tell Mark you'll back off, that you'll give him those files, the information he wants, if you ever find it. We can't let him get away with this. My computer's in the house. He can get into the house. Uh, where's your bike? I, I came on the train. Let's take the tunnel. Sorry. 
Look. What? Over there, the, the Black Range Rover. Did you see the driver's face? It was him. You still believe Mark works for MI5? He's made it look like a burglary. A messy one. Kids. The police won't even bother looking for them. Where did you leave your laptop? Right there on the table. Call the police anyway. Report it's been stolen. What's the point? Mark can put what he likes on my hard drive now and the computer can turn up whenever and wherever he wants. Oh, come on, David. <sighs> don't give up now. All he can do is threaten us. You don't think that's enough? It means he still hasn't got what he wants. What he needs. So? Until he does, he's still vulnerable. <sighs> Not as vulnerable as us. Where did you go? Uh, home. We were burgled. Oh. Well, that man's been here. In the office. What did he want? He took your computer. My work one. You didn't tell me he was from the police. Uh, he isn't. He says the security service. MI5? Although I don't believe him. Would MI5 trash your flat? Helen, what's going on? It's a long story. I'm a good listener. And it's complicated. Oh, when isn't it? Listen, Kendra, I really no, don't no, need you this. you listen. I've looked out for you. I've tried to keep Clive off your back, partly because he's a dick and partly because I like you, Helen. I'd like to see you get on, but you are going about everything the wrong way. Am I? You turn up late, you leave early, and when you are here, whatever you've been doing on that computer has bugger all to do with what you're supposed to be working on. You don't understand. No, you to... are not listening. It's too late now. Clive's been to HR. That's it, girl. They're letting you go. Hey! It's one way! Idiot. You're going the wrong way! David? How do you feel? My shoulder's killing me. And my knee. This is all my fault. You weren't driving that van. You think it was a coincidence? Not really. If I'd have stopped seeing Jamie, none of this would have happened. Well? I'm so sorry. Can you ever forgive me? I'm trying. Listen, I've spoken to Mark's boss, what, ex-boss. What? A man called Warburton. He phoned me back after I called to make a complaint. You never said anything about this. Well, there's been a lot going on. Warburton said that Mark Harris left the security service six months ago. He's freelance. That's right. Uh, Mark? You're wasting your time with Warburton. He's irrelevant. What are you doing here? It's a public ward. I'm visiting an old friend. Sorry to hear about your accident. How did you hear about it? I brought you something to read. The Times Educational Supplement. The job section's a bit thin this week, I'm afraid. Oh, and I'm going to have to hang on to your computers for the time being. Look, I've told you, I don't have these files you want so badly. I believe you. All the same, Helen, if you persist in your investigations, then those computers will turn up with some very unsavoury material buried deep in their hard drives. Hello? Helen, it's Claire Ashton. We've just been reading Jamie's will. He's left you something. Bring your car. I don't have a car. Then you'll need a taxi. Why? You'll see. To be frank, I'm surprised he even made a will. Stated just a few days before he died. Perhaps he felt his life was in danger. That seems a possibility. He left you his stereo. What? His hi-fi system. Apparently it's extremely expensive. And, uh all his CDs. You don't look very pleased. Were you hoping for something else? Not a USB drive. Sorry, what? A, a memory stick with files on it to go in a computer. No, nothing like that. Uh, no letter. Jamie wasn't a great letter writer. At least he very rarely wrote to me. He always preferred talking face to face. Yes, well, I haven't always been as fortunate as you have in that regard. He left you all his music, too. Never will find some boxes for you. I'll never fit all that into a taxi. We'll come back for the CDs. Oh, and, um, don't forget this. 
What is it? The instruction manual. Jamie seemed to think you'd need it. Careful. Oh, mind your leg. Here, I'll put your crutches in the cab. Oh. What is this stuff? Oh, I could hardly tell her to keep it, could I? Oh, oh, I'm sitting on something very sharp. Where are we going to put all this? Well, it's a speaker. C- careful, they're horribly expensive. Where's the Uh Greenwich, please. Park Street. All right. Don't you think it looks a little out of place in here? How do you turn it on? It doesn't seem to have a single switch or button. <laughs> Typical, Jamie. You have to know what you're looking for before you can find it. Hang on. Uh, his mother gave me the manual. I've got it in my bag somewhere. Oh, here it is. Oh, he's written me a message. What message? It just says, Helen, listen to our mix on this and hear the difference. Meaning... Uh, Jamie made a CD, uh, all our favourite tracks, his and mine together. Oh, cosy. Here. Oh, yeah. Did she give you anything else? <laughs> like a USB drive, for instance. Uh, no, just the stereo. Now, how do I... <sighs> With Jamie, nothing was ever simple. <laughs> CDs weren't good enough. You had to play some kind of special disc. SA CDs? <laughs> and, of course, he had the equipment to make them, too. I hope this works. When I played it on mine, there was this weird screeching sound after the first track. Sounds like he balls it up. That's what happens when you mix audio with data files. What did you just say? When did Jamie give you this disc? The last time we met. Stop it there. Why? Helen, please. Don't you see? This is it. There is no USB stick. I had it all the time. I just couldn't play it before. Whatever Jamie wanted me to know is on this disc. Turn it off. Uh, let's try the next track. That was the one that screeched. Hello. Oh, it's Jamie. Oh, 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 David, are you all right? Just turn it off now. No, why? Well, Helen, if you're listening to this, then I suppose I must be dead. <laughs> Jamie. That's a weird feeling. Hmm? My voice from beyond the grave. Don't listen to it. Help me up. He's left me this message. Why shouldn't I listen to it? I wonder what I died of. Well, that's another weird one. Although, of course, by now... You'll probably know the answer. Turn it off! No! It's a funny thing. For some reason, you're the only person I can tell. Maybe because you're the only one I've never lied to. (laughs) I should have married you, Helen. Except you were already married by then. What I'm going to tell you won't do much for your opinion of me. I'm sorry about that. Well, you're the only person whose opinion I really care about. Well, that's life. I suppose. Or not, in my case. Okay, I'll get on with it. If I'm not what I seem, what you thought, then I'm not the only one. I'm in business with some people I don't altogether trust. (laughs) Nothing new there, but one of them, I'm sorry to say, is David, your husband. What? That's ridiculous. You remember Mark from university? (laughs) Nasty piece of work. On the surface, he's all bluff charm, hail fellow well met, and underneath, he's the tricksiest bastard you'll ever meet. Well, Mark ended up working for MI5, of all things, till he got kicked out. He had me stealing documents from my employers, the good old Bank of International Commerce, or Bank of Bunts, as it's known in the city, which, it won't amaze you to learn, is essentially a gigantic money-laundering operation. Well, to begin with, I well, I didn't mind helping Mark, you know, doing my bit for Queen and Country. They were terrible people to work for. But after a while, Mark had a better idea. <laughs> Instead of just stealing information about a few key accounts for Her Majesty's Security Service... Why not take full advantage of the bank's facilities while we were about it? Borrow money I knew they wouldn't miss and make our own investments. And that's where David came in. Is this true? No. Not any of How should I know? Poor David. A double first in maths and now he's teaching two plus two to snot-nosed kids in Deptford. It's a great thing to have 
principles, or so I'm told, and David does have principles. I expect that's why you married him, not me. But things change, don't they? Maybe he found out he hated teaching. Maybe he missed the dizzy heights. Maybe he just started envying all those other mathematicians, those lesser brains who went straight into the city and right off the bat were earning more than they could spend. I don't know. You'll have to ask him. I just know that one day Mark brought him in and said the three of us would be working together. Tell me he's lying. Do you know what a quant is, Helen? Someone fiendishly clever with numbers who can understand those complicated equations they use in derivatives, or those highly geared financial instruments that people get so worked up about. Well, David is our quant. I hope you don't think I'm telling you all this out of spite. I couldn't have you all to myself, so I'm, I'm going to spoil it for you and David, because I know you love his principles. And it can't help but change things between you when you know they're for sale. Say something, David. What do you want me to say? No. The reason I'm telling you all this, Helen, is because you need to understand the situation. You see, if I'm dead, then I think Mark may have killed me. He was always so big on security. No loose tongues. He runs a tight ship, Mark. He finds me too sloppy. <laughs> I talk too much. I get the feeling he wants to shut me up. Well, it's just his word against mine in the end, isn't it? Actually, no. I can be quite as efficient as Mark when I choose. There's another file on this disc with everything the police will need. Just hand it over and let them do their job. And, Helen, I'm sorry about David. Please believe that. Also that... As far as I've ever loved anyone, as far as I'm capable of love, I love you. Help me up. Oh, not disturbing anything, am I? The door was open. Well, as good as. Helen, you really should think about changing that lock to something more substantial. We've just been listening to Jamie. Really? It's all on this disc. David? He's said pretty much all there is to say. You murdered him. Pumped him full of drugs and tried to make it look like an overdose. Because you didn't trust him to keep his mouth shut. That seems to be a reasonable summary of the situation. David, anything you'd care to add? No. <laughs> right, well, that makes it quite simple, really, doesn't it? Helen... You need to give me that disc. Not a chance. Then I'll have to take it. That's not going to happen. May I ask why not? Because David won't let you. I see. David, would you care to enlighten your wife? Just shut up, Mark. I can see Jamie didn't tell you everything after all. Well, how could he, being dead? But there's something you should know, Helen. What more could there possibly be? You see, it's true the overdose that killed Jamie wasn't self-administered, but the person who injected Jamie, that wasn't me. You're lying. Am I? You're not suggesting that it was David. Ask him. Ask your husband. David? You think I'm the bad guy in all this? Just because I make no bones about what has to be done. David! <laughs> he finds it hard, telling you. So I'll help. It takes two, you know. One to hold the subject down while the other gives the injection. You're making this up. Am I? Look at him. Does he look innocent to you? For God's sake, say something, David! I loved you. But... but all those threats, the school, those accusations, you were knocked off your bike, you're on crutches. All for your benefit. Don't say we didn't do our damnness to avoid this. David wanted to try and make it work for both of you. But here we are, all the same. Do I have to spell it out? If I go to the police, David gets a life sentence for murder. You can do the maths, if you try. And to be honest, who would benefit? Not you. Not David or me, obviously. It's too late for Jamie. No one. And the only loser is a bank whose customers are either terrorists or drug dealers. Frequently both. Give him the disc, Helen. I can't believe you're with him. What do you want? I got tired of being a poor teacher when so many people I knew were rich bankers. I thought it wouldn't matter, but I... 
I was wrong. It did matter. More and more. Not enough to kill someone. That isn't you, David. Isn't it? No. If you helped Mark, it was because you were jealous of Jamie. Which means you knew. You must have known all along about Jamie and me. You weren't surprised at all, were you, when I told you? You already knew. I just wanted you back. Why should that slimy tosser have you as well as everything else? Didn't it even matter to you that he poisoned our marriage, took the best part of you and kept it for himself? I didn't realise you hated him so much. There's a lot you didn't realise. Mark's used you, can't you see that? He needed a good mathematician. Oh, how can you be so stupid? What he needed was someone who was so jealous of Jamie, so full of envy that he'd do what Mark wanted done. How did you find out about Jamie and me? Mark told you, didn't he? And now he owns you. She has a point. There is a syringe in a safe place with your fingerprints on it. <sighs> Come on, Helen, we all do it. In Jamie's world, they call it leverage. I expect journalists have a different name for it. So if you'll just hand I over won't. that... I <laughs> Take the CD. Let me go! <laughs> Got it. <laughs> I need to speak to Mrs. Ashton. It's very urgent. There's a CD Jamie made. It'll be with all the others in one of the boxes. Just get the police to come round right away. They'll find it. All I want is to talk. Make you see reason. Without the disc, who's going to believe you? There's another copy. What? Jamie made two. One for each of us. The police can have his. I see. So you think you've won? No one's won. We've all lost. It doesn't have to be like that. You, you can still save David. No, I can't. Don't you care what you're doing to him? I do care. But I care about other things as well. Thanks for coming. No problem. Here. Yeah. What is it? I got Clive to write you a reference. Even though he sacked me? How did you manage that? He saw your piece in the paper. Wanted to claim some credit. I told him this was the least he could do. So? What now? God knows. If you need somewhere to stay... Uh, or... Thanks. I'll be alright. I may as well get used to it. Being on my own. Anything lined up? No. But I've got an interview next week. They saw my piece too. A national? Mm. So now you'll be a proper journalist. No more parking zones. If I get it. I never thought it would happen like this. Oh, you rock the boat all right. Well, I suppose that's how you build a career. Use what you have to get what you want. Well, I'd better be getting back. I'm just going to sit here for a bit. Watch the world go by. Yeah. I like the river too. Makes you think of all the people who've ever sailed up and down it, crossed over it. Or under. All that life. You'll be all right. You think so? I'm sure of it.
In Leverage by Simon Passmore, Helen was played by Claire Foy, David, Blake Ritson, and Mark by Charlie Cox. Kendra was Sally Oruk, Claire, Joanna Monroe, Jamie, Niasha Hatendi, and Ray, Sean Baker. Leverage was directed by Sasha Yevtushenko. <laughs>